a beautiful day. Hashtag Team Allblade and hashtag No Blade Left Behind. Come on in, throw me a subi smile, and all I gotta say is squad goals. Thank you for being here, for clicking in today's video, and for joining me. Hopefully, wherever you're watching from, you're drinking something cold and caffeinated, sitting in a comfy chair, ready for a shave. You know why I'm saying I'm really excited. We're gonna be talking about Mike over at Shield's brand new four-piece safety razor. That's right, we got it in hand. This is the adjustable four-piece titanium safety razor being offered by Mike at Shield. Ah, I'm so excited to talk about and spotlight and showcase how this razor operates, how it works, how it assembles, and how it you know can really, really adjust from being very, very mild all the way to extremely wild. Ah, it should be so fun. I've never used this before, so it's definitely, when I saw that blade gap and blade exposure, I kind of went, oh, you know what I mean? It definitely is a very simple system. I think it's elegant the way he went and approached the, you know, uh, adjustment mechanism. It's simple, but very, like, it works, right? And sometimes that's the best way Occam's razor, you know? It's sometimes the most simple um, concept is the best approach to a problem. And I think he really, Really, uh, he's, he's, I think he's on the right track here, no pun intended, uh, as far as the way that the razor assembles, the way it works, and the way it shaves, at least based on the face. Again, set up like this is like 72 grams, so it's really, really nimble, but smooth, and it really allows you to optimize uh, just how much exposure and performance that this setting right here has. Today, we're going to do this a little different. We're going to do this through three parts. I want to do a kind of a maximum exposure, you know, more neutral exposure, and then the most mild to showcase the different variations that the razor has because as I, if I was viewing this this is how I would want to see it so I'm really excited thank you for being here for it. it's going to be a lot of fun and if anything I'm excited to see how it does on four days of growth it should be awesome we're going to be also revisiting a, um, alien shaves this is Braveheart it's utilizing their area 51 base and I was really impressed by this last time we used it so I said to myself I want to use it again I, I know it's another shield and air, um, alien shave video but I just want to talk a little bit more about this base it's very premium the puck is stamped. You can see that they've got in and serialized. It's actually a sealed product straight to you, which I thought was kind of cool. It smells absolutely fantastic. This is based on their tribute to um, Burberry for men. So when you open this, you know the smell. It smells upscale. It smells sophisticated. It smells expensive. Again, Burberry for men. I think this is spot on the nose. It smells really, really good. Great projection. And it lasts. What I really liked about the splash last time I used it is it lasts. And let's talk a little bit about this lather. I did that in our Phoenix artisan accoutrement this is their dreamscape scuttle and our mountain hair shaving brush which i just thought really paired well with the label i love the video or the photos um, that i was able to kind of do and take a look at this stuff the intro video was a lot of fun i won't lie i just really like the colors and the splash and the way everything like reflected light it was just really cool and the lather today it is shiny it is um really really hydrated and it produces look at this stuff so much release from my brush, this brush is actually the Omega um, 1098. Um, this is a bore brush that I, I it kind of fell apart in their plastic handle, so I re um, rehandled it utilizing one of Jeremy's. And it meant to talk about some excellent, excellent release. I love when your lather just wants to get out of that brush and onto your head. Oh, it's, it just makes you want to shave. And today I'm really excited to be trying out this razor with their lather. Again, huge shout out to Alien Shave. They sent that our way, and I'm really excited because. I, it's a base that I've um, been very curious about. Again, this is something that's made me very interested. Seeing them go from more of the like their shade, their pre-shave stuff, which I I still use, I love. Their their pucks are phenomenal, and I swear, you know, but they're glycerin. Where where this is more of a tallow, and it's a goat milk mix. Definitely slick, definitely very easy to use and very premium. And I like the post shave on it. So I, at least the first time I used it, I'm excited to retry it out using this. Oh, uh, let's get this four days off of my head and get this shave started. Again, the last time I used that shave soap, anything it touched got really slippery. So I'm already alley them up just so to make sure I have lots of grip on this handle. Again, this is sitting at 72 grams and we're going to start it off with a maximum blade exposure. The way that works as you, as I, the way I've been using it is kind of just unscrewing the handle just ever slightly just barely tweaking it and then uh, pushing the bar forward I want to talk a little bit before we jump right into this about some of the you know maybe shortcomings or things that I think could be updated you can you can't really tell how where this razor has been adjusted to first and foremost that's the first thing I noticed when I was building it and assembling it this morning is you really can't tell where this razor is set up right because there's no lines I think if there was like a middle line here kind of like the Merker progress that allowed you to say okay right now I'm this 
far past that middle line, it would give you an ability to kind of set it and then adjust it. As as right now, you only really can utilize and optimize three different settings, um, like like every single time, right? I think when it comes down to adjusted like adjustable razors, it, all, it really matters to be able to go back to your starting place and have reference points, right? As a reference point, you can only go really to the middle. You can only go to the maximum. And you can only go to the you know the minimal. I mean, you could just kind of every single day fiddle with it and make it go back to where you're right where you think it is, but you're going to be eyeballing it. And I think it takes a really keen eye to use this razor as far as if you're trying to get it perfectly um, like set up every single time, if you're not going to that minimum, maximum or middle setting. Again, that's my personal opinion because you don't have a reference point. There's no lines. I think lines would also really help when you're talking about adjusting the razor. So I noticed when I was assembling it, right after you get it kind of almost all the way built, you want to set the bar up. And in order to do it, I was pushing here because you can't really slide it here because I, you don't have gripping lines. So I think if you had grippy, grippy lines right here, it would not only help with like kind of like eyeballing it, but it would also allow the razor to kind of go into its different settings from the side rather than from the front bar. So those are two kind of points that I have criticism or points of like, you know, I have recommendations for things I think that could be improved. As far as the actual assembly, the way you, it all works and goes together, it's very simple. It's very elegant. I like the way that the bar sits inside of the other bar and then you have bars inside the head cap that push your blade into place. It makes a lot of sense and it, you can see the stacking mechanism is very simple. If you get it wrong and you flip it around backwards, I did that. I sent a photo over to Mike and I said, have you ever shaved like this? It's like, I've never shaved like that because it's so simple to see it set up wrong that you, you wouldn't have a problem or you would never be curious about how, you know, if it was, if it was correct or not. As a person that kind of fiddles with things, I am curious how it would shave if you were to you know, assemble it backwards. But for now, we're going to do it as is, and uh, we're going to do it as recommended. I also think it would look really cool polished, but that's just my take on it. I know everybody's in for the polished. Take a look at this. As we start the kind of shaving process, watch the four days. You can hear this. It's very audible. That's the one thing I noticed on the face is that it was very audible. I would say blade fill on this is reminiscent, if not as high as the um, Icon Tech. I think if you talk about like, you know, people that search for like exposure maximum, right? People that are looking for the most aggressive of aggressive. I think that definitely is, with the maximum exposure and the maximum gap um, is, is similar. I think it fits right into that crowd. And I think that that group of people that said, you know, Mike's razors are a little too mild for them, or it does, they don't have enough um, real kick to them would find this to be very, very, um, very aggressive, very shocking. I think shocking is the right word I would use because Mike is known for producing razors that are pretty, you know, uh, like commonly accepted, right? I think that he, he really segments himself with the like majority of preference, you know, like the, like just what most people would want. If whether you're a new shaver or, or experienced shaver, I think it's like he sits in that more medium and medium aggressive, medium uh, efficiency. Whereas this, I think this sits in the highest efficiency and most aggressive, if, if, if not one of the like all time most aggressive razors I've used as far as blade fill and performance. Now this is, like I said, utilizing a moving bar. So you're getting around uh, 1.25 gap and um, positive, lots of positive exposure. I'll have those um, stats going in the, like the, from directly from him video. But I did want to call out that this does have quite a bit of range going all the way down to a 0.05 gap, but more of a way more like, you know, me, like mild, beyond mild with the same razor, which I like. I like being able to see, you know, okay, what's maximum, what's, you know, what's the, the more mild. Take a look here. It is smooth. That is one thing I noticed about this really, really high exposure, um, maximum gap side of things all the way maxed out is that it was extremely smooth, very, very, very um, efficient and comfortable with lots of audible feedback. And you can just hear that razor quiet down as soon as we're down to the bone, right? That is to the absolute bone, very, very fast. It did not take a lot of energy or effort to do my face. My neck loved having that much growth get wiped down in one pass because you just limit the amount of, um, you know, irritation that you can have with a safety razor, right? If you go over a space over and over and over again, trying to get it close, I typically will get a little irritation on my neck. Whereas utilizing a razor like this, where you do not do that, you only have to go against it one single time, right? To get that close, close shave. I, I my neck really liked it. 
And you can see here, all right, there's there's no subi magic going on, no editing. You can see how close that was, really fast, really easy, almost effortless, but I'm, I'm, I'm applying a lot of care. I'm not doing a ton of pressing and I'm allowing that razor to do all the work for me. 72 grams is all you need to get that kind of shave. Oh my goodness. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're going to adjust this and we're gonna just simply um, slightly unscrew it, right? And then we're just gonna push that safety um, bar forward. But you can see where my hand is. And that's why I'm actually only using one side of the razor today because look where my finger is. That is how I'm adjusting it. And if you were adjusting with two sides of that blade, I would be a little skeptical. I'd be a little worried doing that every single time, right? With Especially even on camera because I'm, I'm half the time, I'm mostly just distracted on what I'm saying to you guys, right? I'm not paying as much attention as I should be to where my thumb is going. And I could see that being a kind of a, an accident waiting to happen. So like I said, we're going to be using the razor now in its most like mild setting. And we're just going to see how this does. Again, that shave, oh boy, close and very, very, very comfortable. Um, really, especially, it's, I think it's almost kind of like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed at how comfortable that shave really was with how easy and um, really no like, you know, issues. Oh yeah, look at all this stubble just coming off. Again, this is with the most mild setting. And I think there's almost been a reclassification in the shaving community as to what is really needed from a safety razor as far as, you know, a blade gap and blade exposure. I think razors like the Henson and, you know, the Razor Rock Mamba, the, um, the Carve, uh, there's a lot of razors that have come out that have shown that you do not need a ton of it. The, the Carve Overlander have shown you don't need a lot of blade gap and exposure to get a really smooth shave, right? There's a lot of razors out there that are really kind of defining smooth and um, what performance offers. And this kind of does the same thing for me. It shows me that you do not need a ton of gap and a ton of exposure to make a really, a, to get a really close shave that's comfortable, that's smooth, and that's pretty effortless. Um, I think there's a lot of people that do not like blade fill. And there's a lot of people out there that uh, would be kind of discouraged or um, find it off-putting with how much blade fill that, that maximum setting offers. But I still think there's a group of like, you know, people out there that really want the most. And this razor does both. I kind of like that. Now, again, there are some shortcomings or some things that I think could be improved, especially where, you know, reference points. I think a reference point would be absolutely fantastic with this razor. But as far as the actual shaving with the mild side and knocking down both, we're gonna have to do a little bit more buffing to get it as close as the other side. But you can just see it comes off still with no problems. Um, I think that this side almost feels more like the, um, honestly, it feels kind of like the gem as far as how smooth it is and how little blade flow I'm getting. That gem razor is really, really good for me. And with this mild, mild, mild setting, I'm still getting that same smoothness. That's really impressive to me. I think that's... Uh, a showcase to how well the razor operates, even when it works with that kind of safety bar, like right that far forward and it's still shaving really easy. I was, I was skeptical. I was very skeptical. Like I said, no, nah, I don't think it's going to shave as close. It definitely is not shaving as fast, but as far as closeness goes, I think with a little care and a little extra effort here, I think it would be just as close and just as comfortable as the other side because it's not really producing any chatter. I'm not getting any irritation, I'm doing even a couple extra strokes here. And it's really, really smooth. Wow, yeah, very comfortable, very easy. And again, I think it's an elegant approach at making a razor have an adjustable exposure. There's not a lot of razors that have been offered historically. If you go back and you do some searching, there's not a lot of them that offer an adjustable exposure. And to say that it has this much adjustable exposure, I think is especially unique. There's not, even when razors do it, right? There's not a lot of changes. And this really has a lot, a huge spectrum of different shaves that it offers. The Tartara, I know I'm going to get asked, so I'm just going to straight up call it out. I'm going to mention it right now. The Tatara razor, right? That offers the similar, you know, moving safety bar, I think is also in that same kind of category for me of being like, you know, it's a kind of a, um, a razor that it was hard to dial in because either I needed more gap or more exposure. 
but in the equal settings, right, in the neutral settings, and that's where I got my best shave was like more in the neutral settings because I had almost enough gap and almost enough exposure, but I was constantly trying to find like a balance between the two. And because the razor swings like this, right, you, I could never find that perfect balance out of the Tatara. Whereas this razor, right, because I'm only utilizing one side and I'm able to capitalize on how far really I can push that safety bar. I, I think I actually get a closer shave with this razor. And I think it actually offers more of a, a large um, spectrum for as far as performance, ba just based on using one side. Now that does mean you can't go like one side on one side where you can with a Tatara, but that's just my take on it. I think you get more off. Look at this stuff. I think you get more um, range with this razor. This soap, it's doing it all over again. I feel like I'm having deja vu. I, the residual slickness here is crazy. I do not need it to relather up. We're just gonna adjust the razor and keep going because the soap is so slick still on my head. Okay, we're just gonna take our handle here. We're gonna unscrew it ever slightly. You guys see this? Then we're gonna come in we're gonna flip it around and I'm gonna be very careful here. We're just going to adjust the safety bar and just push it just slightly. I'm trying to keep my hand in place here so you guys can see. I know I'm not on the Subi hat cam, but I want it to be more middle. So this I think is the middle of the safety razor. I'm pretty sure that looks like middle of the safety razor. That's like, if you were to look, compare it to his um, DE head, right? I think that is about where the DE head would sit. Take a look. Okay, so now we're just going to screw it back together. Just tighten it down a little bit more and there you go. So this is more of the middle and that's what I was trying to say is it's kind of hard to tell without reference points, but we're gonna get in and we're gonna try it from now like the more medium um, side and just do a little touch up and see how it feels. See this, so I was talking to Mike about the actual safety razor, um, things that I thought could be done to, you know, improve it or increase its ability to be used, right? I think usability is very important, especially for the general user that doesn't want to fiddle around with their shave, right? A lot of people don't want to sit there and try to eyeball and, and, and see if they're in the right spot. And a lot of um, adjustable safety razors get actually put into one spot and used like that forever, right? They're never actually adjusted. So I feel like, especially if a razor like this is being offered where you have to adjust it, you have to kind of set it every set it up every single time you use it, right? You're actually having to set that razor and figure out what it's doing. I think if you're gonna offer a razor like this, you need reference lines. And I was talking to him about, you know, op options and updates. And he actually said, you know, he's not even sure he wants to continue making it because he's not sure that it has um, the appeal, right? It's like, I don't think a lot of people want to adjust the razor like that but for me i actually really like this i think that the way that the razor sets up and shaves offers a lot of range especially if you're a person that is okay with only using one side of the razor like that you can see here it is still taking off a little. We got a little bit off with the kind of medium, like neutral setup. And I do think the neutral setup's actually probably where most people would prefer to shave, which is I, I, you know, kind of ironic since um, the, his other razor is set up already like that. The DE head, right? It's kind of already set up like that. So this kind of offers the range of razors that he sells all built into one razor, but you kind of have to only use one side of the razor, in my opinion, to keep your, safe, your finger safe, right? To uh, um, optimize the real range spectrum and to um, kind of make it more like, you know, like I would say more replicatable every single day. I think if you're looking for a razor to, it's gonna offer replicatable performance, then you want, you're gonna all be only using it one of three ways, middle, max, or minimum. In my opinion, that's really where this razor shines. Very, very smooth shave, very close shave, very easy shave. And again, that was four days of growth off the head. It felt so nice, it felt really smooth, and it felt as good as it looks. Oh, it's so nice. I've missed this. I have needed this. Thank you for joining me for it. We're gonna grab a little splasher and see how the post shave really shines and how that base protected us from the maximum exposure DE adjustable head from um, Shield. Again, that's a $40 Shield head, approximately $43. If you go over on his AliExpress and you're looking for it, it, uh, you, it does come as the three pieces. And I, I think that's a good way to do it, right? I think that's a, the ideal way for somebody out there that wants to test and wants to experience what it's like to have an adjustable uh, moving sliding safety bar. Oh, it's smooth, comfortable, close. It smells very, very ritzy. Oh, it smells just posh. I think posh is a good term for it. This again is Burberry for men and it's Alien Shave and uh, Braveheart. Every man dies, but not every man lives, right? That's what I'm saying, right? It's awesome. It smells incredible. And again, thank you for joining me for it. If you haven't, please go below, smash that sub button. I'd love to talk to you all in the comments. And until I see you there, soups out.